Hello, Embers. Welcome to Ember Exchange. I'm very glad that you've decided to join us today. I'm Dylan. And I'm Jill. And I'm Heidi. Today, we have a, a relatively, I would say, heavy episode. Mm -hmm. um, so just to lead off right up front, if you are a younger person who enjoys hanging out with us every couple of weeks when we drop an episode, this might be a good time to go and check in with your mom or dad and uh, make sure that you guys are on the same page about this. And if you are a parent or an adult who has young children around, um, use your discretion. Um, because today our topic is, um, it's a part of a two-part series that we're going to do on the topic of abortion. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, we're titling this, My Body, Whose Choice? Question mark. Um, so just a, a warning up front that we will be discussing some mature themes along those lines in the next couple episodes. The other thing I would like to lead off with is as Christians, we believe that there are consequences for sin, but we also believe that there is complete forgiveness and redemption in Jesus Christ for those who come to him in repentance. Um, so it's a, it's a heavy topic with a lot of worldly weight associated with it, but there is always hope in Jesus. So with that, let's stoke some conversation. Well, why don't we dive right into it? So the topic, my uh, my body, whose choice? Uh, and we're going to split this into two parts, like I mentioned in the intro. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to briefly outline the goals, I think, for this episode, and then what the goals will be for the second episode, because I think there's two kind of distinct categories that I put the conversation topics into. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for today, um, I think that we really need to start by clearly defining what the pro-life position is. Spoiler alert, we're pro-life if that wasn't something you could have deduced <laughs> by listening um, to us. But to clearly define that position, because I think a lot of times there's a, some straw manning that happens associated with this position. And so we want to be very clear on what we mean when we say that we are pro-life. The second thing that I th think we want to do is try to knock down some of the common arguments against the pro-life position. Um, some various things that are uh, pithy catchphrases or things that are thrown into the faces of people who hold pro-life positions mm -hmm. and what appropriate responses are to those, both for those who are listening who hold those perspectives, but also if you're an ember who's listening and you receive that sort of feedback, here's some tips on how you could respond to that. And then lastly, this will be a bit more free form, but it's interesting to me uh, that this is such a pervasive topic. Why is this so persistent? Like this has been a thing as long, I remember as a kid, like we would go door to door and like pass out flyers to vote for different, you know, things to, in our state that were pro-life bills. And so as long as I've been alive, this has been an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so why is that? Why is this issue so persistent? Mm -hmm. And then obviously in part two, we would love if you continued listening with us and then we'll try to jump into kind of the history and the rise of abor abortion, including landmark legal cases, obviously Roe v. Wade. We'd like to evaluate the current political landscape surrounding abortion and then also kind of recently, what is the abolition movement and kind of the rise of popularity in that? Mm -hmm. And then who is the criminal, the doctor, the woman, both in the situation of abortion? And can a Christian vote for the lesser of two evils, quote unquote, on abortion um, and possibly on other issues? Which is really important because at the time of recording, we are in an election year. Yes. And this is a very hot button topic mm -hmm. yes, for that. So mm -hmm. valuable, hopefully for us individually to work through that conversation and then also for you, Embers, as listening. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of a bit of a roadmap of where we're going. Um, so to, to start off for this episode, we said that we have to define some stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. let's start with defining abortion. And it turns out that that isn't even that easy to do. So Heidi, can you give us maybe a little bit of what the medical definition is for abortion? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like Dylan said, this is super important because the medical field can twist things. I maybe even would put a asterisk on that and not only can the medical field and industry twist things, but they have, in fact, done that. And actively do. And yeah. we'll get and into that do. more and later. It seems to be intentional as well. So yeah. and we want to be very clear about what we are talking about and what is evil and what is just simply a 
natural part of life and death. The medical definition of abortion is the termination of pregnancy. In the medical sense, this term and the term miscarriage both refer to the termination of pregnancy before the fetus is capable of survival outside of the uterus. This is from the medical dictionary. So this includes elective abortions and includes miscarriages. Uh, yes. And I would even uh, contest a little bit of their definition on the capable of survival outside the uterus because there are states in the United States where you can abort a child up to the time of birth. And we know that yeah, they're trying preemie to babies are a thing. Mm -hmm. right. and they can survive outside the womb and yet... Right. Mm -hmm. And how many stories have you heard and probably also not heard of, oh, I had a child at 20, like 19 week preemie or 20 week preemie and and the kid was fine and the kid is fine and yeah. surviving and thriving today yes yeah and but we also want to be clear like if someone has a miscarriage and that child is already gone and they have to abort that dead child from the mother to save the mother's life that is not what we're talking about here correct and um, we do not think that is evil, and we do think that that is medically necessary if the child is dead. In, right. in a lot of cases, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Which kind of leads into the colloquial definition. Uh, correct. And so this is, yeah. this is the thing where if you say that I, you're against abortion or you're pro-life on the street, everyone knows what that means. Everyone knows that that means that you are against yes. elective abortions, except for the people who would like to obfuscate that and say, oh, then you must be against removal of miscarriages. You're a horrible person. That's a normal medical procedure. Right. And so the colloquial definition I would say is that abortion equals elective abortion most of the time, except for when it's somebody who's trying to <laughs> argue, argue against, against a pro-life right. person. And then it's, oh, well, you had an abortion because they needed to clear a miscarriage. Right. Yeah. And it's not the same. And miscarriage is a really difficult thing to talk about. So we are extremely grieved for anyone who has had to go mm -hmm. through that. Yeah. And if you had to go through that and were far enough along where you had to have a quote unquote medical abortion, please know like the word abortion is triggering and that can feel heavy, but you did not have a abortion that we are condemning that Christ condemns. Correct. And that is also why I would condemn the medical establishment yes. for yes. lumping those two things under one term. Mm -hmm. Correct. I think intentionally yes. so that it to normalizes the evil thing by putting it with something that is tragic and not, yes. I mean, evil mm -hmm. in the sense that bad things happen yeah. because it's a sin-cursed world, but not an act of evil on the part of a mother right. or a doctor. You're also talking about Potentially, right? We understand a mother that has maybe lost her child, and in that situation, you may not be in the most logical state yes. either. Yeah. And so, the medical industry has taken advantage of that, I believe, mm -hmm. by using that to intentionally cause that confusion. And now, oh no, what? Like, I thought I was pro life, like, for example. And then, but my paperwork that I got from my insurance says I had an abortion. Yeah. No. Right. I, that it was that is wrong on the medical industry's front, not mm -hmm. on you. Yep. And I have some more. We'll get into this more later. Yeah. I have some more information on how they further obfuscate that. Yeah, um, right. But okay, so that's the the medical definition, the colloquial definition. What is the Christian definition? And this is the definition that we are using going forward when we yes. say the word abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, murder. Yes, it yeah. is murder. It is uh, of a of a child, a yeah. yep. living human being created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it's is a child sacrifice. It is a child sacrifice. And I would even go so far as to say that uh, it is the modern equivalent of child sacrifice to Moloch. So for those who aren't familiar, Moloch was an ancient Canaanite god of fertility and prosperity who demanded child sacrifice of his worshipers. Um, you see worship of Moloch being called out in the Old Testament very explicitly mm -hmm. and God yep. being like, hey, Israel, don't sacrifice your children to Moloch, as if that wasn't obvious. Um, but today we, we don't necessarily call it sacrificing our children to Moloch. Um, he goes by a different name and that's career success. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's, that is what we, when we say 
abortion, we mean elective murder of a child in the womb. Yes. Yes. Uh, and we're going to keep saying the word abortion and not as the word that we use. I'm not going to put qualifiers in front of that because I refuse to nuance with devil worshipers. Yeah. For the people who are listening, we have defined what abortion means. So from here on out, you can't say, oh, well, abortion means multiple things. That's not the case. We are defining abortion to mean one specific evil thing. Yes. Carry on. Yes. All right. So that's what it is. How prevalent is it? Is I think another thing that we need to establish. Very. Very. <laughs> yeah. How how very, Jill? Can you give um, us some data like on that? Like hundreds of thousands. So in a year, around three hundred and fifty four thousand in the U.S. And since nineteen seventy three, it is approximated to be sixty three million children killed. I think that there were a couple places that I saw varying in years of all the way from uh, 2014 till now. So in the last decade, some of those years peaked to almost 630,000 a year. So wow. yeah, double the number that average is out since 1973, obviously. So from 1973 to 2024, it, the average is 354,000. But I did see in the last decade, some of those were up and over the 600,000 mark in a year, which is incredible um and right that's more than uh i saw something that was on the order of one every 83 seconds oh, yeah oh, okay there you Lord. go um so the other thing to note is that when you do you look at the studies yeah it's challenging because the definition has been obscured so yeah when it yes. says these numbers how like how many of those were classified as abortions were actually miscarriage or mm. those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and also since 1973, because yes, we have, we have heard about it at least in, in our entire, in the entirety of our lifetime, but that's only for me, 1993. So 20 years before that, what did it look like? And so, right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do kind of have a moving an answer, target. Though. I have an answer. So, that would be an argument that someone said, oh, yeah, but at the stats, you can't say that it's that many that are elective abortions because it's the definition is obscured. Well, it turns out that it's a, at least 90% of abortions are okay. elective. So that, wow. well, a lot of them are because of a failed pregnancy for another reason is a total misdirection and a lie. So right. mm -hmm. not the case. Okay. Next, maybe let's look a bit at the demographics. Yeah. Um, Heidi, what did you find on the demographics for, for this? Yeah, so um, like we said, 90% of abortions are elective, and the vast majority of women who actually have abortions are unmarried, so about 87% of them. The majority of women who have had abortions are in their 20s, and that's about 57%, okay. so just over half. Teens ages 13 to 19 only accounted for 8%. Which is interesting to yes. me because that would be another argument that i would hear people yeah. making well what you're going to force a 16 year old girl to carry a kid to term that's literally eight percent of the total right it's mostly yeah. women in their 20s yeah right i mean 20s and 30s makes up 88 88 89 percent of that so like yeah. again of the 90 percent the other 90 percent of that is people in their 20s and 30s which we would kind of put in that oops, maybe I'm successful in my career, so I don't have time for this kid, or I don't want to put money towards this kid, or other things. Yeah. Um, uh, the racial and ethnic demographics are also um, very kind of harrowing here. So we have about 42% of women who have abortions are black or African-American, 30% are white, 22% Hispanic, and 6% other. So nearly half are African-American women. Yep. And then if you go further down to like the per capita, yeah. um, you see it's 20, about 29 out of 1,000 black women will have an abortion. About 6 out of 1,000 white women, mm -hmm. 12 out of 1,000 Hispanic, and 9 out of 1,000 other. Um, so yes, 30% of abortions are white women. The 
per capita rate is substantially lower because the population is higher. So, mm -hmm. right. But even with that, yes, you can see that there's this very interesting racial breakdown yeah. um, in this case. I think in all of it, the most shocking, I guess, not that it all should be shocking, 63 million lives, innocent lives lost, is tragic. But in addition to that, 61% of those women that have had an abortion had at least one previous live birth. So they, so they were mothers already. Were moms. They saw a kid. Children. Grow up. Had like carried and had the, a child so it kind of yeah. makes you wonder like how could they do that and what's the advertising that's happening to make them yeah. think that that's okay um i mean i think that at least in our culture today career success is pretty uh i mean it's lucrative and, and a child is the opposite of lucrative his potentially the ch financially the opposite of lucrative and mm -hmm. as far as that's also concerned generally speaking in a career if you are further along so right we said 20s and 30s also were a higher number of those abortions so say you have your first child in your 20s and then you have five six seven eight years to get along in your career most likely you have either moved up in title moved up in company moved up in money probably as well and in reputation mm -hmm. and so in that sense having a second or third child is not only going to take away from some of those things per se but also like you may not have as much time for them or they're more of a burden to you because you've now dedicated more time to your career yeah so then so then sacrificing sacrificing your career is more of a sacrifice to you than that child. Right. Oof. <laughs> it's That's what true. they've said. So yeah. then like how can the church and people who value human life like step into that cuz that to me is not or I've never heard that talked about really. I mean it is an uphill battle yeah. in culture today. That's hard. And just the assumption that, oh, you've had kids already does not mean that that mom is not struggling with having a second or third or fourth child. Yeah. And so kind of getting ahead of that and being like, hey, we are we want you to have children. It's a blessing and yeah. getting ahead of that. And I part of the issue, and this is an entire can of worms that we are not going to go into great detail. Right. In, but the underlying, it's I mean, it's feminism all the way down, really. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you tell women that they are the same as men. And they should be able to have the same career as men and be able to do the same things as men with the same uh, physical consequences as men. You are lying to them. And then you generate, if, if you are lying about reality, then you must force reality to conform in whatever way you can. And that is what killing a child is. Mm -hmm. It's removing the direct and consequence sometimes as a negative term, like consequence being the result of, you're removing the very positive result of sexual intercourse, which is children. Right, yeah. And it, within the bounds of marriage, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but when that, that exists outside of that and you want to remove the, the consequences of that, that's rebelling against the natural order that God has created. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so feminism all the way down. Yeah, but what, looking at these stats is super helpful because we get to understand how better to assist and like speak to the women who are more likely to have abortions, which sure. oftentimes I don't hear that. So, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Uh, and I'll get into the, the racial breakdown is interesting. I have a point later on that I'll bring that back up. Um, so just keep that one in the back of your minds. All right. I think we've well defined what it is and that it's a problem. Yeah. Not yeah. that I think that any anybody who is pro-life, I think, is aware that it's a problem. I couldn't have, before I researched for this, I don't think I could have given you these sorts of stats. Mm -hmm. um, so having some like hard data to back up the, the convictions we have, I think, is valuable. Um, but did we change any minds by telling people that it's a big deal? Maybe, maybe not. So chances are you're either with us or you're against us thus far, and then you're going to be in a camp where you're going to either be arguing against this position mm -hmm. or you're in a camp where people are going to be arguing against you. And so this is where it would be <laughs> yeah. valuable then to go through some of the common arguments against the pro-life stance mm -hmm. uh, in the ways that they're often portrayed. So 
I forgot my picket sign. You forgot your picket sign? My body, my choice. Oh. My body, my <laughs> choice. It sounds like you're open to a rational and reasonable conversation. <laughs> Uh, that is the Tell first one. Tell me why you're, why I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my choice. This is how it goes. It's not a, it's not an intelligible it's conversation. It's not your body. Right. Okay. So that is, that is like the one that everyone knows, right? Yeah. It's everyone's yeah. heard is my body, my choice. Yes. So much that during, and we're not going to go into vaccines because that's another oh, <laughs> yes. in on this, right? Um, so much that it got flipped around for the, the vaccine and it was no longer my body, my choice. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so wow, yes. how would how would you re respond to that if somebody said to you, "My body, my choice"? Uh, my body is a temple. Okay, I don't believe that because I don't believe in God. So I would say, I sorry, I believe in God. I'm I'm playing the person <laughs> who does the it. Devil's advocate. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. literally. So I agree with you, Jill. However, I would start by saying, "It is my body." Or it is your body. It is your choice. You had the choice on whether to engage yes. in sexual intercourse or not. Mm -hmm. You yes. chose to engage in it. This is the consequence of that. And we are not simply dealing with one body here. We are dealing Correct. with two Th bodies. Well, three. The man, the woman, and the child. Oh, sure. In and this who... specific instance, yes, though, sorry. <laughs> you're talking about trying to kill something that isn't your body. Correct. It's, yes. it's quite simple. There's your body, and then inside of that is something that is not your body. Right. Yes. And, and so that's you're how biology choosing works. Yes. what to do with another person's body. Correct. Correct. And, and you actually... are choosing to end that body's life. So yep. therefore, yes. that is the definition of murder. Yep. And your your to your point that yes you made the choice when you chose to have sex. There's also the point that you had other choices. We didn't strip like or you have other choices. You have now. other choices. They weren't all stripped away from you. You could choose motherhood. Mm -hmm. You could choose adoption if you're in this situation, or have you not reached this situation already? You could be abstinent. Yes. Yes, or even, you know, we don't necessarily advocate for this, but use contraception. Like, there are a lot of different ways that you could not have ended up here. We will touch on rape later. Right. N many, the majority of times, though, it is not rape, and that's what we need to focus on more right. than the minimal And the first two is. choices still apply in that situation. Motherhood and adoption are not off the table. Yes. Correct. So uh, you have lots of choices. Also, it's not your body. That's how yep. I would respond to my yeah. body, my choice, if they let you get a word in edgewise. Yeah. Okay. The next one that would be mostly directed at me yeah. is no uterus, no opinion. So yes. Um, yes. here, if you're a man and you receive this, uh, made, this argument, if you can even call it that, made against you, uh, turns out that in order for that kid to exist, the man had to contribute 50% of the DNA. So turns out it is just as much his child as it is hers. Yeah. Additionally, if the woman does decide to keep the child, the man is on the hook for child support, so financially responsible, and yet has no say in whether or not the kid lives or dies. That seems a bit suspect. Mm -hmm. So there's under the current system, uh, abortions are solely and unilaterally elected by the mother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and the father has no say and still is burdened with a financial responsibility. So I would say that there are three alternatives to this. If you're going to say... Uh, I, it's my body, my choice, and I get to choose what to do with this potential life, which is also a dumb word because we'd say it's life with potential. It is a life. Mm -hmm. It's not a potential life. Um, there are three alternatives I would say that are just as morally horrible, uh, but more fair. So if you want to say that abortions are still solely and unilaterally elected by the mother, uh, the father does not have to be required to pay child support because he has no say in whether that kid lives or dies, so he should not have to be responsible for paying for it. When it Even is. if the mother and father are in agreement? What do you mean? Of the decision? Like, they both decide to keep the child? If the father says that he wants to keep the child, then presumably he would be the type of person who would want to be a father to it. Oh, right. And sorry, you are saying under this current situation, the current system, which means if he says that, but she says, nah, she can still elect to have the abortion. Correct. And that's what there's not like a paper case. that has like sign on the dotted line, both the mom and the dad have to sign on this before an abortion occurs. Right. Right. So the other option, uh, option two is that 
the father could also unilaterally choose abortion. So a woman gets pregnant, she wants to keep it. If you want to make the father have to pay for it if it's kept, then he should also be able to unilaterally say, no, I don't want to pay for this kid, kill it. Right. Regardless of whether right. the mom wants to keep it or not. Okay. They both would have okay. the ability to terminate the pregnancy. Okay. Uh, and then the third option is kind of actually what Jill was suggesting, okay. is that abortions must be elected unanimously. So both the father and the mother have to agree, yes, we want to abort this kid. And if either disagrees, then the dissenting party is financially responsible for the kid. Which means that if a mom okay. wants to get an abortion and the dad says no, she still has to carry it to term. He just assumes custody and responsibility, financial responsibility of the kid when it is born. Right. Those are all the wrong answer, but they are all more fair than a woman getting to decide whether she wants to kill the child or not. Right. And then the dad being on the hook without any say in whether the kid lives or dies. Right. Because a child is, in fact, 50-50. Yes. The kid is 50% the dad and 50% the mom. So that is how I would respond to somebody who said no uterus, no opinion. So I get that response, but how does that help? Because none of those are... Uh, Mostly it pushes the ball back into the other person's court because none of... They would reject all of those options. They don't want any of those either. So then you say, okay, well, you don't want any of those and we shouldn't have the system that we have now, so we shouldn't have abortions. Which is the the right solution. That's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, generally speaking... The response being these aren't great responses because we don't agree with them either, but they're not going to like those answers. Right. So, yeah, and and also there's a a space where... I, I go back and forth on this. We believe that Christ is king and that all of the arguments that we base on scripture are logically and philosophically valid. Yes. And I don't particularly care if somebody disagrees. Like, if you don't think Christ is king, I mean, it doesn't make him any less king. Right. right. However, right. There's, a, there's a space also where this is an issue that you can logically argue without even going to that point. So even if you play by their rules, it's inconsistent. And so that would be an example of right. where I'm playing by their rules and I'm pointing out that their logic is inconsistent. So Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. All right. So that's that's that one. Right. What's and another one? I mean we've yeah, we've been obviously saying, okay, it's not really your choice because the child is a child and the child doesn't get a say yes, I want to be killed. But what about it's not a child yet. It's just a clump of cells. You're not killing anything. Mm. That's not murder if it's not a child. Right, because it's very convenient to just dehumanize it, and then it's not a problem. Yeah. The medicalization, again, strikes again here yeah. of using medical-sounding words to describe what is actually a human being created in the image of God. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um Because and- pregnancy really isn't even a medical issue. No. We attack not. pregnancy by a medical in the medical system, like we treat beyond it like a disease. belief, yes. In you birth, go to the, in contraception, you go to the doctor in, and you go to the hospital, like for sick people, right? And you're, you're not, not sick. Sick. You're pregnant. Two different things. Yeah. And you are in fact growing a beautiful life. That is. Yeah. That's a whole worldview. <laughs> yeah, it right is. There, which it I is. love. Which I love. Um, but even anyway. beyond that, let's let's again play by the rules by their rules a little bit. Okay. And let's okay. look at fetal yeah. development. Oh, right. Let's do it. So. Yep. So week one to two. Is when for we, we won't go in through all of this in extreme yeah, detail. Yeah. Fertilization occurs on the zygote. A fertilized egg is formed. And then by week three, the zygote divides into 16 cells and travels to the uterus. And at week four, the embryo implants, implants into the uterus and then the heart begins to beat. Mm-hmm. And if, if that, if you want to be as... You know, scientifically just scientific as possible. If something has a beating heart, it is alive and it's its own thing. Right. Correct. And so that's why. So this is I'll, we'll get into this a little bit in the legal stuff next part yeah. in part two of this um, in the next episode. Um, but things like heartbeat bills and 14 week bands and those sorts of things are based on these fetal development stages. Yeah. And you'll find that um, those who are proponents of abortion don't particularly care. Right. And it's been so thoroughly proven that this is an alive human being 
that right. they don't even bother arguing in the space anymore. So it's a clump yeah. of cells. If you get that argument from somebody, it's probably somebody who doesn't realize that that has already been disproven, well debunked yeah. by the medical community, that right. it is in fact not just a clump of cells. Right. Well, and as Christians, we believe that life begins at conception, yeah. not at implantation, which mm -hmm. are two different things. So. Yeah. But then you look and you see like week five, six, and seven, you know, you're getting neural tubes forming and a brain and spinal cords and, you, you know, it's the embryo is 0 0.04 inches long and has a structure of a head and trunk and limb, like budding limbs. And I don't Eventually know. Eventually up to last week I, nine, yeah. you got ar arms and legs. And they're like moving. Move. Yeah. So you're like, last time I checked, moving limbs and hearts beating didn't... Uh, isn't just a clump of also cells. Just random cells. Which is why, so you'll, uh, we're not going to go into great detail. Any state that's like we're putting in a 14 week and that's like, oh, that's super that's restrictive, so a 14 week abortion ban. The child, the living human child, has eyelids and ears two weeks before that point. And, and you're going to say that that's a clump of cells. And the first... I mean, he or she is, like, moving around and, like, has a, has a heart rate of 100 beats per minute at week seven. So seven weeks before that. Yeah. yeah. Most women, well, actually, unless you conveniently take a pregnancy test literally, like, during week one or two or three, which you probably wouldn't because you'd have to miss a cycle, which is usually the first warn like warning sign that you're like, oh, something might be up you're already at week four or five before mm -hmm. you even like realize that you're pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first sense to develop is the sense of touch, which includes like pain. Yes. So. Oof. Yeah. Um, and then I think lastly in this responding to this one, so we gave the medical reason why that's a terrible argument mm -hmm. but i really love psalm 139 for this yeah. mm -hmm. um heidi would you read psalm 139 13 through 16 mm -hmm. for us for you formed my inward parts you knitted me together in my mother's womb i praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made wonderful are your works my soul knows it very well my frame was not hidden from you when i was being made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. I see being made in secret and also unformed substance. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the 16 cells or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the zygote, the fertilized egg. That sounds like an unformed substance. Mm -hmm. And David, the psalmist, is saying that God's eyes saw him him david when he was an unformed substance it wasn't that david did, started to exist when he came out of his mom he didn't start existing when his heart started beating he existed as an unformed substance yeah. so i don't i especially if you're a christian i don't know how you can read that and say it's a clump of cells right yeah so we've gone through some of the what we would probably consider sillier arguments that really don't hold a lot of weight um and the next one would be, I guess, a few of the maybe tougher arguments yeah. to face, I guess, would uh, be... Sorry, tougher as in the subject matter is difficult. Yes. Not that it's we would think that it's a good argument against no. the pro-life position, mm -hmm. but it does start to deal with some Some more heavier, sensitive... Sensitive things, correct. yes. The question of, like, what about rape and incest may be a very sensitive topic for someone. The thing is that you... Yes, it could be a sensitive topic for someone. And also, the pro-death group, the pro-abortion group, yeah. I refuse to call them pro-choice, um, will we'll bring this up as if it is not that. They will say, well, what about rape and incest? Mm -hmm. Just as easily yes. and flippantly as they will say, Correct. no uterus, no opinion. Right. Right? Yes. Um, However, and, and so we recognize raised, that it is yeah. a sensitive topic topic correct right it and so in right in an honest question in, in an honest questioning situation we're not entertaining those that are just shouting this out like it correct. is though equivalent this, to my picket sign that says my body my choice yes. this this okay. response here though is for the people who are going to just fling it yes, at you correct mm -hmm. um so i have found 
and this isn't something I came up with on my, you know, there's a number of people that have suggested this. If somebody comes to you and says, well, what about rape and incest? You can say, okay, for the purpose of our conversation, let's say that we make an exception for rape and incest. Would you support banning all other abortions? They will never say yes. Right. Mm. And then you can just say, okay, well, if, if that isn't enough to make this exception, then you don't actually care about rape and incest. So stop bringing right. that up as a topic. Right. That is the proof. That's this. the proof that they're not being sensitive to the sensitive topic. They're just throwing it out there. Right. Correct. And if they do, for whatever reason, say, yes, I would like to ban all other abortion except for rape and incest, then we can rest assured that that's a very small amount of actual abortions that happen. Correct. Correct. So on the order of a percent. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere yes. around there. A couple there. percent, maybe. Yes. And that's something that we can wrestle through to, together with the mother and yes. talk about how two rights or two wrongs don't make a right. Mm-hmm. Yep. and talk through the other options mm-hmm. that there are, which is... That we talked about earlier, yep. which is, yes, you could keep the child and be a mother, or a, adoption is a very valid opportunity as well. And the much more humane thing to do is to link arms with that woman, to support her in every single way that you can, to encourage her, mm-hmm. to encourage her with her options, and like treat her as a human being who's been hurt and dealing with the consequences of yes. sin, which ends up being another human life. Yes. And so we can honor both Correct. the human life that's growing and the mother who's been hurt mm-hmm. yes. and punish the one who deserves to be punished, which oh, yes. is the rapist. I support the death yes. penalty for rapists. Right? Like, that he just gets off. So when it comes to the question, if it's flippantly being thrown out as rape and incest and you say, okay, I'll concede, where where do we stand now? And it's a no. That They're not trying to make valid arguments anyway, so right. that's not the point. But when it is an actual sensitive situation with an honest question of what about this scenario, then there are still choices here. And unfortunately, yes, similar to how we believe that right, Christ came to save everyone but there are still consequences on this earth for decisions that occur. And in this situation, you have been, a terrible wrong has been done to you that does not now still mean that we can kill a child. So how can we walk and support and be surround the mother in that situation? And there are so many resources for people who are in that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. And, and punishing a child for the sin of his father is something that we don't do right. in civilized culture. And we are valuing the life of the child based on the circumstances in which they were conceived. And if we're saying, well, should that child, you know, live a life knowing that they were conceived by a rapist and live this horrible life? Well, first of all, you don't know that's going to happen, that they're going to live a horrible life. They could live a great life. And, and, and in, even then, that's not an excuse to kill right. them. But also, right. in fact, should live a wonderful life because they should be taught that yeah again it was a terrible thing but look at the positive that came from it your the value of your life is greater than that wrong that was done um okay the next one that is often lumped with that is health of the mother so what about the health of the mother if the mother might die because she has to carry this baby to term is that a valid region for an abortion i think the simple answer they say, what about the health of the mother? I say, what about the health of the child? So now you've picked one person to be more valuable than another. Mm-hmm. And that's not something that humans get to do. The only scenario where I could possibly even consider it would be an ectopic pregnancy, in which case the child has a 0% chance of living. But the child is alive. I know. So then should the mother sacrifice her life for a child? I would say that is like the most difficult that is, circumstance. That is probably the hardest one to answer to. Fortunately, that also it is, is a like fraction the fringe, of a percent. Right. Like 0.001%. So never anything that would like validate the millions of babies no, that have been aborted this, thus far. However, like that one circumstance, it's like, okay, I could maybe see the logic. And that would be the only time. And that is something that... Um, if you are a person who is seeking God mm-hmm. as a mother, and that is the situation that you're in, that is a decision that you will stand before God. Right. Right. And that's and that is for God to judge. That is not for humans to judge. Right. In the broader case of this, though, teeny tiny fraction of a percent not validating at all for the millions and millions of 
children who are killed. Correct. Yes. Outside of that. And like an ectopic pregnancy would be, from my understanding, one of the only times when it would be like totally certain that the child would not live. Right. And so like, what about the health of the mother? You can't say, what about the health of the mother? Like she just doesn't want to have a baby. Or she could have right. postpartum depression. And that's the thing that is so pernicious about this one. Right. Health includes mental health of the mother, which, which is absolute. Right. Just. Yeah. You can't go there. Horse doo-doo. Yeah. It uh, is. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Right. So you can't use the health of a mother just to explain that like very, very, very small percentage of times that the child would potentially die. Because most of the times like the child is going to live or the mother could potentially live. Correct. And so it is worth going through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another argument. Well, if you just outlaw it, people will get unsafe, illegal abortions on their own. So why wouldn't you make it legal so that it can be safe? Uh, and I would say, well, you mean unsafe and illegal like all of the other murders that take place right. in the United States? Yeah. Like, that's that's what the, it it's is. the same argument as saying, well, if we just let people murder each other in a legal way, then it'd be safer for everyone. <laughs> because now and we it can wouldn't just be illegal do it. then. Right. We can no, no, but that's it. the point. We I don't can just want do it to it be safe. in daylight. So, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then also the whole, well, the mother might end up hurting herself. Yeah. Yes. Just like if you decide if you that you don't want your arm anymore and cut it off. You hurt yourself. Like that's there's in natural this case, consequences for sin. Yes, but in this case, instead of hurting herself, the other result is killing a child. Well, and likely both might happen. So you kill a child and then also hurt yourself, which sounds like the natural consequences of sin again. Also, yes. like we are ignoring the fact that many of the abortions that happen, the mother gets hurt like there are complications all the time with yes. abortions there's mental health issues if we're going with if yeah. we're lumping in That's mental health, health with mother. health of mother uh-huh there's plenty of mental health issues with having an abortion as well so like i don't understand it, that argument so you're saying that one. even no. <laughs> even lawfully right now it's not that safe it's not that safe you're right like it's, so it's wrong and it's still unsafe. Yes. But it's legal. Yes. It, it, we didn't solve anything. Um, and then finally, the last argument that often and probably most frequently you will get is unintelligible screaming. Um, and in this case, I can only turn to Proverbs 26, 4 through 5, which says, Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, or he'll be wise in his own eyes. Which I've always taken to be don't respond in kind to the fool. So don't in unintelligibly scream back at the fool, um, but also respond as the folly deserves. So don't wax loquacious on a very nuanced argument about why abortion is wrong. If somebody is screaming unintelligibly at you, that's right. a waste of your time. Completely. So. Yep. All right. Those were the, the common arguments that I've seen most frequently. And I hope that those were valuable um, arguments uh, to use in response if mm -hmm. you receive yeah. those. Yeah. One argument that I've heard in the Christian church is like, well, freedom of choice. To murder? I've heard it in the church where it's like... Sorry, are, is... you, are you more so saying not freedom of choice, but like free will? Sorry, yeah. Okay. Will. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Yes. We have free we will We have free sin. will. Correct to sin. That right. doesn't make it right. So it doesn't make it right, but it can speak to whether it should be legal or illegal. But murder so is already illegal and it would fall under murder. So that would be then the we'll, argument would then, to that. Would then make it illegal again. <laughs> right. I'm not freedom. I'm not freedom willing to collect rainwater in my backyard which is illegal but not very dangerous i'm choosing to murder someone which is the correct response okay. to that however right. the free will job. the free will <laughs> thing comes from like we all have the ability to sin or not to sin so really the free will argument should then just mean that there's no legal system correct which is wildly <laughs> unbiblical okay yeah. great yeah. i'm glad we cleared the air on that because yeah you're right 
the civil magistrate is instituted by God is well defined in Scripture. We do. I we've teased this a little bit. We can talk about what it means to have authority instituted by God, and there is very much a space for civil authority as instituted by God. Yeah, and would enforce <laughs> things like not killing people. Right, murder, murder. is still illegal. Yeah. Because even if you say yes, we have free will, so therefore we shouldn't like make it legal or illegal. We should just let the Christians make the decisions and let the non Christians make the decisions. That sounds like libertarian BS to me. And all it literally so sounds so yeah like, like libertarian on seven cans of Red Bull. If you're a Christian who believes that this is murder, then it wouldn't matter. You know, like why do we need a whole other abortion law? It should just be outlawed because it's murder. Uh, yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Got it. Cool. Uh, they <laughs> basically the current <laughs> the current stances. They were like. Here's a law. Do not murder. Asterisk. Abortion is fine. Right. Which so we're like, no, no, no. No asterisk. No asterisk. Murder, murder is, is wrong. wrong. Right. So we don't need... Wow. Okay. So we don't even need abortion laws. No. We just need no. to like clearly define what murder is. And then we don't have to worry Which about Which I mean, any I think this. it's pretty yeah. clearly defined. Craziness. Wow. Okay. So like... <laughs> we'll go we'll go into this in more detail yeah. in the next episode when we talk about like the legal history of this and what it means right. for and what policy it, stances right now. roe v wade dobbs etc yeah why but, did that just click for me here on the podcast with the embers that's why we do this heidi so that we like individually i've had some fun epiphanies here and hopefully the embers listening along are like oh, now and again nice. you know now and again you just need a little assistance sparking the flame yeah <laughs> Okay. All right. That was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so that was arguments uh, against a pro-life stance. Yes. Uh, it was. For this last section here, and we're moving towards the end a little bit. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Of let's, part one. Let's, Thanks for hanging with us. Yes. Of yes. part one. There will be a part two. We knew going into this, we should have maybe done this with the DEI and split it out as well, but we knew definitely going into this that this was going to be very long. So We yeah. learned from our mistakes, guys. Yes. yes. And, and that's we will do more DEI in the future because we know that we did a very skim over that. Anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, additional discussion points. So yeah. I want to go back to, we talked about the medical industry yes. a little bit, and uh, I want to be very clear on my perspective on how the, the medical industry is in this space and, and is making things horrible. Mm -hmm. um, the modern medical industry knowingly and intentionally enables and encourages abortion through multiple avenues. Uh, and those multiple avenues are using confusing terminology, which I will detail, as well as a lack of transparency when it comes to the tests that they run during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. yes. So let's just talk terminology. Mm -hmm. We talked about the medical definition a little bit at the beginning yeah. where there's uh, essentially you get miscarriage and stillbirth lumped into that along with elective abortions. Yes. The thing is that if you go and look at how they break down the different types, they have a, that's not a dozen, it's a lot. It's like four or five different types of what are essentially miscarriage or stillbirth. They call them spontaneous or incomplete or missed abortions. And so if you look at the list of types of abortions, it's more than two. It's mm. like five. And most of them are just miscarriage. And then there's one for induced abortion. Mm -hmm. So that's one way I think that they are trying to obfusc obfuscate that, again, 90% of abortions, at least, are elective. Right. So that it's category, that it's not like it's evenly broken down between the categories. It's like 10-ish percent, maybe, not even, are five of the categories, and 90% is the one. That is incredibly dishonest. Yeah, it is. Right. So actually, you're saying that in that five or six other category it's actually only like a percent each in each of those categories. Yeah. Something, something to One that to two effect. Percent. The other thing is that if there's no clarification of this for a, a patient or, or a mother, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your paperwork, if you had a miscarriage, if that, and I'm horribly sorry if that happened to you, mm -hmm. if you had that and you got paperwork and you read it, it would say that you had an abortion on there. And that is, it's horribly It's turning. just so misleading mm -hmm. because we have known people who have gotten yeah. that and said, what, what happened? What did I do? If this thing that I did because it was medically something that needed to happen is what all those pro-life people are railing against, then I hate pro-life people and I'm pro-choice. Right. Yeah. And they're indirectly, but I think intentionally undercutting 
the anti-murder stance mm -hmm. by yes. lumping these things together. And that's just... I don't uh, think it's misleading. I, it's just a straight up lie. It is a lie. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, so that's terminology. The other one is lack of transparency. And maybe you guys have a bit more experience because mm. you guys are women. And so you've probably thought about these things more than I have. But I was interested to see i've heard that there are certain well you go you have a lot of tests that are done to yes. you and the baby when you're pregnant mm -hmm. and i've heard people say that as the result of certain tests their doctor might have suggested that they get an abortion mm -hmm. um and so i don't know do you guys have any more information on what that might what those tests are or what that looks like and how that breakdown happens i mean i know certainly that there are tests to um, see if the baby has Down syndrome mm -hmm. yep. or autism or any sort yep. of... Like genetic disorders. Genetic, genetic disorders. disorders. And in that case, they oftentimes will recommend. Mm -hmm. There can also be very early signs. Is it? I think it's one of the like blood tests that they take. There can be early signs of mental disabilities, but also like physical, physical disabilities, disabilities yeah. as well and mm -hmm. in those cases like to them that considered an imperfect child so mm -hmm. you can choose to abort your child at that point as well and they give you the opportunity mm -hmm. so some of the tests that i found mm -hmm. we are not i think we have to legally put a disclaimer we're not medical professionals don't yes. take whatever we say as medical advice mm -hmm. blah 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 whatever I found some like specific names of tests. So if you're a woman who is pregnant and you're getting these tests, do some I'm, research. Not, I'm not saying don't get the test because right. I don't know enough to say do or don't. Mm -hmm. um, right. Maybe you ask your doctor, hey, what's the purpose of this test? Right. right. Or, or do some of your own research. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a good doctor, then you should be able to and they should answer honestly if you just say, hey, why? Yeah. What is the purpose and why and what is it going to answer or tell us? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so there's screening tests and diagnostic tests. There's mm -hmm. For screening tests, there's the first trimester combined test. There's the integrated screening test and cell-free DNA. I don't know what any of those are, but those were listed as ones that are supposed to screen for some of these things. And then there's the diagnostic tests. So amniocentesis, uh, one that showed up a lot in a number of different sources was CVS or chorionic villus sampling um that i think is the one that is linked to downs yep uh, and then percutaneous umbilical blood sampling or pubs is another one so right that also might not be an exhaustive list there also might be very positive and useful things associated with those tests in addition to some of the things so again we're not doctors but ask your doctor hey what's the purpose of this test and you know it wouldn't maybe be the worst thing to get the test done and then you know my child's going to have Down syndrome and you can process that beforehand and get extra help that you might need after birth and things like that. But like you got to be really clear with your doctor that you're not interested in terminating this pregnancy right. and understand that they might use that to right. manipulate your mind when you're in a very vulnerable space. Yeah, right. For sure. Yep. Um, sorry. And then the last one that this isn't, I think this isn't the result of some specific tests except like just an ultrasound. But multiple pregnancies can be a reason that they mm -hmm. will suggest aborting some of them. So like if you have triplets and they tell you that your body can't handle having triplets, mm -hmm. they might say, oh, it's fine. Just like get rid of one or two. And you can still have one consolation prize. Like that's, that's just horrible. And that oftentimes will happen after IVF because IVF will many times lead Fertilize to... Fertilize multiple eggs. Right. Multiple. And that's a whole other conversation that it we is. could have in that yeah. space yep. on that. But that is a good note that that is a yep. common place where that can come up. Right. So if you're... It is a result. Yes. So if you're considering going down that road, just know that if you have multiple babies, you will also have to, you know, go through that whole discussion with your doctor. Yep. And then to, to cap off my annoyance with the medical thing here is that it's always this appeal to authority of, well, you're not a doctor, so you can't say. You should trust the science. You should trust the experts. And they say that it's mm -hmm. not a life. And mm -hmm. they say that you're gonna, your, li your child's life is going to be horrible if they're born with Downs. So you should really just trust us because we're the experts. Mm -hmm. I'd like I've... to say to that that the greatest authority is God. And he made pregnancy as a very natural course of life yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and i don't think he messed up i no. agree <laughs> okay yeah so that's how i feel about the modern medical industry on that very 
just very frustrated. Mm -hmm. And it, I think these are good discussions to have even with people who like know abortion is wrong because you don't want to be shocked when your doctor brings yes. something up mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're vulnerable and you don't know what to say and you don't have someone else in the room. It's like you need to be prepared, especially women and husbands of women who are like in that vulnerable space to yeah. know and be prepared. Yeah. And, and being, you know, going into a pregnancy or having kids and saying, oh, I would never have an abortion good do that right you didn't do anything wrong if your doctor comes to you and suggests that because i think that would there would be some sort of like mm -hmm. even just being near the subject especially because it's very personal because it's your kid at that point it can just probably make you feel very weird um so know that this is a thing that could happen right yeah, that's a very good yeah. warning mm -hmm. all right i'm going to shift gears a little bit now um, away from the medical establishment and i want to talk about the elites Oh, yeah. Ooh, spooky conspiracy theories. Oh. Um, not really, though. No, no right? this is conspiracy no. No. with this. I will mention a couple at the end because I think that they uh, – conspiracy theories are the truth just six months before the media will report on <laughs> yeah, it, you're right, generally okay. speaking. <laughs> yep. Anyway, um, no, but, but this section or this conversation here is for me that promoting and exalting abortion is a tool – used by the elites to increase their own power. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I, I think that I can prove that I've got a series of mm -hmm. um, general categories that I think are going to be very familiar to people. Yep. And then you'll see how the solution in all of these is get an abortion. Oh, okay. So yeah. the first one, who's heard that overpopulation is killing the planet and we're all going to die? Yeah, I've heard that. Yep. Me. Well, so the truth is that more people are harder to control and so the solution, as proposed by the elites, is don't be selfish. Stop killing the planet. Get an abortion. Which is yes. making the planet more valuable than your own child, but okay. Yes. Yeah. But they, they would say that in their Correct. worldview, that's true. The greater good. The greater the good planet. is more valuable than your child. Oh, I hate the greater good. <laughs> uh, next one. Who, uh, have you heard of, do you know what eugenics are? Is? Eugenics is? Yes. Yes. Um, the lie essentially that's told is that humans are perfectible. And mm -hmm. so this, we yep. touched on this with like the, the elimination of Down syndrome, children mm -hmm. with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. The, I think the truth is that we hate disabled people. Uh, not we, this is again, the elites talking. The yeah. truth is the elites hate disabled people. So the solution as provided by the elites is a decent person would not force a disabled child to live a suboptimal life. So get an right. abortion. Well, and there's like, there are, lies built into their solutions as well right oh like, certainly oh don't be selfish get an abortion because you're gonna save the planet yeah well, the, the no. lie there is that if you don't value the planet more than your child you're selfish yeah right and then the lie with eugenics a decent person wouldn't force a disabled child to live a suboptimal life well then they're just saying that a disabled person isn't going to live an optimal life. And that's a lie, right? Every val life is valuable. And so and and that a decent person would consider murder as a value as valid a thing valid to do. thing to do then right. instead, which is better because the evil is turned into grace. It is grace and love for you to murder your child right? Yes. right. and evil for you to. Right. So happen. they're trying to make, they're also fluffing up the solution as like this nice thing that you're doing. Right. And it's your fault if your kid lives in suboptimal life. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That's horrible. Anyway. So yes, I've also heard eugenics. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Third one I called hedonism. So the lie here is that maximum pleasure is your human right. And yes. we talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, yes. This can be, I guess, uh, a couple of things. Mostly like you should be able to sleep around as much as you want without consequences. Right. Is, is mostly what that is. Mm -hmm. The truth is that we want you to be dependent and docile. So people who are addicted to their own carnal pleasures are much easier to control, again, than the people who are self-governed. Um, so their solution there is there's nothing wrong with self-care. You deserve it. Get an abortion. Right. Yep. Value your retirement. Yeah. Which goes into the next one. Yep. Uh, yeah. And okay, so this is where, <laughs> remember when I said, hey, remember the race breakdown yes. on abortion? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where this one comes up. So the lie is that disadvantaged communities should not be forced to bear the strain of unsupportable children. The truth is that minorities must never escape welfare dependence. And so what is one way that you can do that? Mm -hmm. Encourage them to get... placed a, 
a clinic down the street get an abortion. And you'll find if you look at the, the placement of Planned Parenthoods and other abortion-specific clinics, they're oftentimes put in um, disadvantaged communities. Right. And yep. less minority in welfare means that welfare is less expensive for the elites. So it just happens to benefit them. And you're also maintaining the mentality that they ought not to take responsibility yeah. for their actions, that it's okay to continue to have un unpresent fathers. And it's no big deal. You can just, you know, take care of that at the but, clinic down the street. But yeah. not only that, but now who is the hero in that situation? Well, welfare, the government. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you also have a an entire group of people that are like, well, the government's helping me, so why wouldn't I yeah. do the things that they want us to do? Because without welfare, I would, I'd have nothing. Yeah, the government is smart enough to offer solutions to the problem that they've created, which in turn creates even worse problems. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. um, if you if you do want to like cause a a pro death pro abortion person to stumble, uh, just mention that the majority of abortions are had by black people and so if you're a pro abortion then you must in you must be pro a smaller black population and see how they respond to that uh, all right and then the last one is this is where we are going to start getting to what people would call a conspiracy theory who's heard of uh great replacement theory or replacement theory yes i've heard of it mildly yeah okay the idea is that the the lie is that white people are by nature evil yeah. the truth is White Christians are the main bulwark against total moral and social takeover in our nation. And you can come and argue with me on X about that if you want. Uh, so the solution is you tell young white women, your oppressive Christian hateful family hates you. You should get an abortion to spite them. And that's why we see that of the categories white sense. women right. are very high mm -hmm. up in that mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. and in doing so then you're able to break down this group of individuals who is opposed to the elites yeah. taking control and you can replace them with the docile welfare people yeah yeah oh, so all of this is i think best summarized as a quest for power and it yeah. is more than secularly evil. This isn't just a bunch of people who are wanting to make themselves better at the expense of everyone else. They do want that, but it's more than that. I think it is also demonic. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I'm not going to go into great detail on this. If you would like to, for yourself, look up Bohemian Grove and the cremation of care ritual, you as a listener should feel free to go do that. Mm -hmm. I put a picture in the show notes for Heidi and Jill to see, and it is it's disturbing, disturbing. Creepy. Um, at least. Yeah. So check that out. If that is something that you are interested in going down a little bit of a rabbit hole, it is, that is starting to get more towards conspiracy theory yeah. stuff yeah. as well. Um, so, so be discerning as you go down that route. But anyway, sure. Yeah. Uh, the one other kind of conspiracy theory that wasn't a conspiracy theory had to do with what they, this is very sensitive. So again, children should not probably be here for this. Um, it was what was happening to the aborted child parts. They were be, yes. they were found um, in some very uh, not good ways and places and being sold for various things. Um, and for a long time, that was decried as a conspiracy theory. They aren't doing that with the parts. Correct. And that was not true. Yes. It, is, it, had, it has, has been, been confirmed found to be true. So do your own research. It is, again, not more than secularly evil, it is demonic. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of that coin. <laughs> yes. Let's, uh, let's again, flip the coin yeah. over. Thank you again for sticking with us yeah. thus far, if you have, and hopefully you join us for part two, because we're going to dig into some of those things that we touched on and some other topics uh, in relation deeper. However, we are so grateful and blessed to have a lot of hope, even mm. as we think of the tragic loss of 63 million innocent children and counting, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. There is so much forgiveness and redemption to be found in Christ. Mm -hmm. We hope that we made it very clear that we hate abortion. Uh, we are not pro-murder. And 
you are killing a defenseless child made in the image of God, and that child has so much value. Mm -hmm. And so their life is very important. And we want to make it very clear that if someone has or any of the listeners know or are one that has participated in the past in this act, that there is still hope. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of hope. Turn to Christ in repentance um, in him and him alone. There's forgiveness and healing. Mm -hmm. uh, no one is ever too far gone. You're not too far gone. Uh, and in dealing with that, Yes. You should not do that alone. No. And and if, if you're you not have meant Christ, to do it alone. If mm -hmm. you have Christ, you're not alone. But also you need community. Yeah, that is yeah. a huge piece of this. So if you can find a local Bible believing church, mm -hmm. they I mean, if they're not willing to pri provide you with support in this, then I would be questioning whether they're a Bible believing church. Right. Um, so find something locally where you can find people to come around you and help you through that. Yes. And then also there are dozens of resources online. Um, I don't have anything in particular, like we're not affiliated with anybody, but like a simple Google search will find you many options mm -hmm. um, for dealing with if you're currently in a situation where you're facing this sort of decision mm -hmm. um, or if you've mm -hmm. in your past had something like that um, that you've engaged in and you're trying to deal with what do you do now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's always more joy to be found in Jesus. There's forgiveness and redemption for those who are willing to repent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one thing that I think we can lose sight of is that, yes, the child matters, but so does the mother. And that's why we're saying, like, you need community. We care for you deeply. And if you are considering going down the path of abortion, like, please... Mm -hmm please consider the negative consequences of that and what you're actually doing and go and find yeah, help, just like Dylan said. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. here for you. Jesus loves you so much. He loves your child, and he loves you even if you have gone through an abortion. Yeah. So with all of that, <laughs> what do we do? Yeah. I think the, the what do we do will get into more detail in part two because mm -hmm. um, we're going mm -hmm. to ground it very much in – like today's political landscape and those sorts yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had to, to summarize a couple of points, for me, the, a big one is rebel against the medicalization of wickedness. Yeah. That means yeah. you do not give in to their terminology, uh, push back on that wherever you see it, because mm -hmm. it is through language that our minds are often deceived and won most easily. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do not allow that to happen to you. I think that even when we were talking about asking those questions to doctors or your doctor, if you have a child um, on the way, like, why do I need these? Or no, I would, sure, I would like the test to know what, uh, what's going on. But just so I'm clear up front, like, I am not, like, an abortion is not a choice just because you tell me that you know, one of these tests comes back positive or negative or whichever mm -hmm. direction is the bad one in their mind. Mm -hmm. uh, even that alone could spread enough light. If enough of us are asking those questions as pregnant women, some doctors, you know, whoever, however long they've been in the industry, like, and they haven't been asked those questions, it right. may make them think about those things. Or they have moms that come to them and say, yeah, sure, I'll take the test, but I'm not going to kill my child over this. Like, they're like, oh, wait, like, nobody's pushed back about that ever before. Like, maybe there is mm -hmm. <laughs> something to think about here. Mm -hmm. um, so even that, uh, I guess, as you say, rebel against the medicalization of wickedness. Yes, there are other ways as well that maybe seem a little less punchy uh, in that can, could make a difference in mm -hmm. that world as well. For mm -hmm. sure. Um, I would say another point would be to be discerning. Um, we'll discuss next time some of the touted pro-life wins. that, And I put quotes yeah. around that because they're not always wins. So if somebody tells you that, yeah, we won, we got a 14-week abortion ban, is that a win? Right. No. No. It doesn't seem like a win. So be discerning. Mm -hmm. Prayer, always top of the list. Mm -hmm. That is something that we as believers believe is powerful. Prayer does do something. Um, so being in prayer. They even say that like the, when Christians are outside of abortion clinics, that less abortions happen. Mm. And so prayer and just showing up, not in an angry way, but in a caring way does make a difference. Um, for Dylan, 
that is me, this is an 1861 tier issue. And if you know what that means, you know what that means. Uh, I would say even more. Um, so be mm -hmm. watchful, um, especially as we discuss and then in the political involvement, which we will get into in the ep next episode. So yeah, thank you, Jill. Thank you, Heidi, mm -hmm. for engaging in this. This was very heavy. Thank you, listeners, for uh, being here with us through this. Um, hopefully it's been informative and helpful um, and, and we've been able to communicate some of our passion on this. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Ember, so much for joining us. Um, I've had a, uh, I will say a good time. Um, I think it's a heavy time, but a valuable time discussing with each of you and uh, getting to engage too with you, the listener. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, if you're listening to this, you've caught us on one platform. We are on various Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and more. Again, we'd like to thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget to, you know, show us some love, give us a like, drop a review, leave a comment. Uh, we'd love to continue these conversations. Uh, we are going to continue this specific conversation, as we mentioned, in part two. Mm -hmm. But we would love to continue these conversations with you guys in the comment section, if that's the case. Otherwise, we'd love to know that you are sharing it with friends, family, and others that maybe you're having these discussions with. So... Yeah. Get the word out there. Yeah. And we, like Jill said, love to keep that going even beyond the podcast. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and um, I guess it's not Twitter anymore. It's X. It's X. Now. It's X. Yeah. So we're on X and uh, we'd love to engage with you on those platforms as well. So sure. yeah. thank you again for being here and um, burn bright embers.